In this episode of Sailing Doodles, I solo sail the new cat 180 miles from St. Martin to San Juan, while Megan does pina colada research. A year ago, this was me. I had a great job as a corporate pilot and thought I was happy. Then I had a stroke, spent two weeks in the hospital, and my career was taken from me. In hindsight, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. I bought an old boat and set off to sail around the world. I talked a good friend into coming along. Of course, I brought the puppy dogs too. This channel is funded by viewers like you. Check out sailingdoodles.com to find out how you can help. Day one of Baba being gone. The only thing we missed so far is him taking the dogs for the walk in the morning. I'm not a morning person. Living on a boat with two dogs and a grown man feels like it could be just like living in a frat house. Nothing is ever clean and it feels like you're always picking up after a party that you didn't get to attend. <laughs> At least they're sweeter than frat boys. You guys want to go for a walk? Do you? You want to go for a walk? <laughs> ah, no biting. Okay, I guess we're going for a walk. <laughs> oh, ow. Okay, okay, okay. Well, the sun's not quite up yet, but uh, everything's done, ready to head out. So, engines are warmed up. I'm gonna set to sea in the new boat. Pretty excited about it. Should be a good day. Long day though, all the way to San Juan. So it was an early morning departure from St. Martin. The winds were forecast to be 15 to 20 knots all day, which hopefully would mean a fast and smooth sail. taking the doodles for a walk before I start my mission to get to the bottom of who created the first pina colada. There are two places here in San Juan that claim the fame. One is Baroshino, which is in old San Juan, and the other one is the Carib uh, Hilton Hotel here right next to Club Nautico. So I'm gonna go to both places, talk to the bartenders, and see who's telling the truth. We're here at the Carib Hilton and we're gonna see how this pina colada tastes apparently or her history on their website. <laughs> uh, the pina colada was created here in 1954 so let's talk to these bartenders and see what they have to say. The Carib Hilton was built in 1949. Though it has had a lot of facelifts it's an amazing hotel with a beautiful pool. This is Alberto. He's the poolside bartender that made me all my pina coladas. Can I add juice? Very simple. Three or four pineapple juice, rum, ice, nothing. You think it's the best around? Do you think it's the best around? Of course, it is. <laughs> and do you believe that it was the first created? Yes. Okay. Ah, let me. It's not because I grew here, but the fact is that the government of Puerto Rico made a recognition of the creator of the pina colada, the guy that used to work here. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, moment of truth at Curry Pelton Pina Colada. Let's see how it is. That's pretty freaking delicious. If it's not the first created, it's probably the best created. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Oh my gosh. What's the recipe here at Caribe Hilton? Okay, we're sailing line right along, doing about eight to nine knots. Uh, you know, it's not the 
fastest point of sale going downwind without a you know spinnaker or anything like that but we're doing pretty good uh kind of the cool thing um that i didn't even realize would be cool on a catamaran is that on my monohull i don't have a, a whisker pole to push the be uh, the, the genoa out when we're going downwind so it it's hard to keep it from luffing on this one you don't really need a uh whisker pole because the beam is so wide I just tied it off to a cleat over here so over there and then just tied it off to that cleat keeps it nice and full and then over here just to be safe ran a little preventer line up there keep the wings open so we'll be I got like 140 miles to go wing on wing all the way down it's really comfortable uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get bored. All right, y'all, we are on our way to the second stop, a little bar called Barashina. Uh, they claim that they invented the pina colada in 1963. So I'm gonna go taste it and uh, see what I think, see what they say. Let's go. A little bit of rain coming up behind us. Uh, we're still doing about nine knots. The wind was pretty light here in the morning. It's only about 10, 12 knots all morning, so it's only doing about seven or eight knots. It's picked up a little now, doing about nine, nine and a half, maybe even 10. So uh, it's a nice day for it though. A little rain showers occasionally, hopefully not too bad. Still got 130 miles to go, I don't know. But it's pretty nice. I think this is gonna be my new favorite spot to hang out while we're sailing. Pretty nice. restaurant Veracina, the other restaurant to have claimed they created Pina Colada. It has a beautiful open courtyard with a wonderful atmosphere. Okay, so we made it to Veracina and it's warm, we're ready for a Pina Colada and this is our bartender Gladys. Hello. This is the house Pina Colada in Vente. 1963. 1963. Okay, so I'm out. I've been to Clarice Hilton and yeah. I tried the. <laughs> That's not it? Yeah, we are. This is the house. Barrachina. All San Juan. Pretty legitimate. Let's see how this Pina Colada fares. <laughs> okay, I think we have a winner. I'm not jumping to conclusions yet, but this is a fabulous Pina Colada. Technically, they use the same ingredients, but they claim that their aged rum is what makes all the difference. The last time I had seen dolphins swimming in the bow wave was actually the very beginning of my last solo sail, the 800 mile trip from Georgetown all the way to San Juan. So I took it as a good omen things would go well. Although pretty much immediately after I was proved wrong. That's pretty cool. I haven't seen dolphins since we left the Bahamas. So uh, it's first time seeing them out there on the bow wave. It's, uh, oh, it's a good sign. I mean, it's a good thing. So pretty cool but well I already had one thing wrong just turn on the engines because I'm a, I gotta pull down the mainsail and figure out why that happened uh, obviously it let loose back there so uh, I don't know maybe an old line snapped or something anyway now I gotta take the headsail down or the mainsail down and fix this well here's your problem your line that tied the uh, mainsail to the back of the boom there well number one it's a little undersized in my opinion for a sail that large 
that broke. Uh, so now I'm gonna cut a new line. Problem is, is it's hard to get up there. Uh, you know, the boom is so much higher. And it was my boom, it's right there, let's tie it. Um, and it's got a little winch for it, but. I'll get it done. Most of my tools and my hot knife were back on the rough seas, so I did the next best thing. I taped off the rope, cut it in half, and then uh, used a lighter to seal the ends. Yes, I know that this sail is actually rigged incorrectly. A line is supposed to run from the main through a pulley in the boom back to the mast where you can tighten or loosen the mainsail depending on your wind conditions. You want it nice and tight for sailing into the wind and you want it a little billowy and balloon-like for sailing downwind. But this was just a temporary fix so I was setting it back up the way the previous owner had it. Which I know is incorrect but we fix it later. Oh crap. I just realized I, uh, the reefing line is underneath the bottom of the mainsail. I thought I had that sorted, so. Uh, I'm gonna rest for a little bit and I gotta take it down because if I got a reef later, I mean, I, I have to have that, so. Son of a gun. First of all, the wrong is from 1880. Oh. As you can see here, this is a family-owned business. It's the first distillery in Puerto Rico. Oh, wow. And you cannot find that wrong in the States. Uh -huh. It's uh, all the production stay here. They make like 50,000 bottles a year. Mm -hmm. And all the production stay here. Wow. So, this is one of the main reasons our piña colada is What really sets gone. you guys aside? Yeah. And as I told you, we don't use that the thing that can make any nice or a blender. Uh -huh. So that makes you that our piña colada is going to be the same one. If you took another one, it's going to be the same flavor. Every time. Yes. And this lovely gentleman serenaded me on the way out. I want to love you. <laughs> And treat you right. I want to love you every day, every night. We'll be together. Raise the roof right over our heads. We shall tell the of my single bed. Y'all, what an incredible experience. I mean, the Puerto Rican people just blow my mind every day and uh, makes my heart swell how kind they are, most of them anyways. <laughs> After a thorough investigation and close consideration, I think that we've figured out who the original is. And I'm gonna have to go with Barochina. Hey, it was just beautiful, it was delicious. It was fresh. The ingredients weren't too different, but the rum made a huge difference. Aged rum and spiced rum at that just makes a pina colada taste that much better. And if we're talking ambiance, I would say that I would choose Berrettina as well. Um, it just has that old Spanish feel. It's romantic. It's beautiful. It, there's this breeze coming through the little courtyard in there that makes you daydream for hours. Um, or maybe that's the pina colada, but... <laughs> Well, off in the distance I see Virgin Gorda, so it's only about, I don't know, 15, 16 miles away to Virgin Gorda. I'm gonna go around the north side of that. And then on over to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Uh, the wind dropped off, it's less than 10 knots now and going pretty much directly downwind. So uh, the head sail was kind of flapping around uselessly, so I rolled that in. Got the engines going. Uh, normally I would just, you know, give whatever it'll take, but we're kind of on a schedule here. Uh, we're already about five days late, so uh, just motoring. Uh, motor sailing, I mean, I got the mainsail up, um, but uh, hey, 
Uh, Virgin Gorda is about halfway, so uh, that'll be about 12 hours uh, since I left, and so I got about another 12 hours to go after that. But this is pretty comfortable. Uh, much more comfortable than doing this in my boat, I will say. So it's not bad at all. By the time I got to Virgin Gorda, the wind had picked back up and I was able to put the sails out again. And just like boat maintenance, the dog maintenance is never done. But I'm sure they appreciate it. It makes them a lot cooler. But it doesn't mean it's not a lot of work. Well, the wind just doesn't want to play ball. It's like three knots of wind right now, so we're motoring. Uh, I'm doing like six and a half, maybe seven knots. And we still have somewhere a little less than 80 miles to go, so I'm um, like 12 hours. Uh, doing that. Hopefully the wind will pick up at some point. It's 9 o'clock at night, 8.30 at night, something like that. Uh, anyway, it's nice and comfortable though, man. I'm telling you, this is, uh, this is easy. It's so easy. I mean, just walk around wherever you want to. It's uh, Cooking's easy. Sailing's easy. It's easy. One thing I've got to figure out though, because this thing is really annoying. One thing that I don't like about this boat, oh, I mean, I don't know how anybody can stand it. The radio makes this stupid, ah, I'm gonna have like an epileptic seizure or something, it's crazy. Anyway, that's the, that's the one bad thing, so. If that's the worst thing, that's, that's not so bad. So, ah. Uh, you got Tortola over there, Yos Van Dyke over there, and then the lights in the distance are uh, St. Thomas. So uh, we're getting there. That evening I headed back to Barrachina. They invited me to their flamenco show. Although it's typically a packed house, they saved a front row spot for me. So we're here at Baratina and they gave me a front row seat and they knew I wanted to <laughs> It was really cool to be able to see them display their art. Well, there's still very, very little wind, six knots. Got the sails up, but uh, still motoring. It's really weird laying, normally I don't have that light on. Just did it for the camera. I've been laying here for a while. It's really weird uh, huh, laying on the netting while you're underway at night, especially. But hey, hey, it's nice and comfortable, I gotta say that. I think I've said comfortable too many times, but what I'm feeling. Well, it wasn't too bad of a night. Been sailing for 24 hours now. Got about four hours left to go. It's kind of cool. The moon's going down as the sun's coming up. So, uh, hey, maybe it'd, it'd be a long day. The boat is always a beautiful place to watch the sunrise.
All right, y'all. Lunch with Bob is like hot dogs or leftover pasta and span. Lunch with Megan is more like this. <laughs> some salsa on top just for an extra kick. Yeah, yep, I'm gonna eat that. Definitely gonna eat that. About mid-morning, it was a great sight to see the skyline of San Juan. El Moro Bay crosses up many times now. El Moro Castle, sorry. Pretty nice little place. Pretty cool thing to come into every time. Just be a nice home port. All right, guys. So, um, Club Nautico doesn't have room for a catamaran. So, I can see Bob now. He is. Um, he's, we're gonna pull in. He's gonna pull in here at San Juan Bay Marina um, to get fuel and water. Um, and I am sweating profusely and out of breath because I power walked over here. There she blows. <laughs> he looks so smitten right now. <laughs> oh, look at me, I'm on a big boat. <laughs> oh, buddy. My hitchhiker picked me up. <laughs> Pretty. A little. It's dirty. I'm not excited to clean it. It's huge! Yeah, you said. <laughs> so how was it? Uh, I'm tired, but no rest for the wicked. We gotta get this thing fueled, watered, and get some provisions to get out of here. So, Yay! You got somebody coming in here? Yep. Yeah. Alright, let's just fuel it and water and we'll go anchor. It was a nice and easy trip, and yes, we did clear into customs. Thank you for watching another episode of Sailing Doodles. This channel is funded by viewers like you. You can go to sailingdoodles.com to find out how you can help.